My name is Donovan and we are just enjoying some Hyrule hot chocolate. It's a Breath of the Wild inspired hot chocolate recipe that I came up with last year for the holiday season <laughs> that quite honestly is the best hot chocolate that we've ever had. The best? Yes, the best. Uh, and so this year I didn't feel like I needed to improve or alter the recipe at all. And recently I got some hot chocolate bombs for my kids to try out. And I don't know why I never made the connection before. But after doing the hot chocolate bombs with my kids, I realized I can take my Hyrule hot chocolate recipe and make Hyrule hot chocolate bomb bombs. So let's do that. Let's make some Hyrule hot chocolate bomb bombs. Now, when I say let's make, this isn't <laughs> solely a let's watch me make this thing. Uh, you can make this too. And if you wanna make these, here's some things you're gonna need. Some mold maker, chocolate, anise pods, cornstarch, ancho chili, cake paint, and of course, a bomb. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can make the bomb. You could 3D print it. Uh, this particular one, I just went on Thingiverse and found a file for it. You could resin print it. You could carve it out of wood. You could carve it out of clay. Kind of doesn't matter. You just need the general shape of whatever you want your bomb to look like. And then we're gonna make a cast for it. So to start out, I went to my laser cutter and I cut out a template for a box that I could put my mold maker in. I should mention that you don't need a laser cutter in order to make a box like this. You can make it out of scrap wood, you can make it out of plastic, you could pour it in a cup. It kind of doesn't matter, you just need a form to pour the mold maker into so that you can get your cast for your bomb. After putting the box together, I glued the bomb inside the box using a piece of straw that'll be the funnel for the chocolate. Then it was time to mix up the mold maker. With the mold all set, I took the bomb out, carved the funnel to pour in the chocolate, then it was time to make the shell. So what we're trying to do is get the chocolate to a good consistency to where we can pour it in here and then slowly spin it around as it hardens to make an outer shell. The rest of the ingredients we wanna put inside the shell so as you drop the hot chocolate bomb into the hot water or milk, it will melt and the rest of the ingredients will go inside to give it that flavor. One hour later. And now that we have our bombshell, we can go on and make the filling. For the filling, we're gonna do everything over a very low heat. I'm gonna start by mixing a little bit of milk and drop in two anise pods. Then add a teaspoon of cocoa powder, a teaspoon of cornstarch, a pinch of salt, and a spritz of ancho chili, and your chocolate of choice. Stir constantly until everything is dissolved, and then go ahead and take the anise pods out. Obviously, I don't wanna melt this as I put the ingredients on the inside of it, uh, so I'm gonna let those cool, and in the meantime, I'm gonna make my wick. Once the filling was cool enough, I filled up my shell, I chocolate glued my pieces back together, and then started to paint. And it's done. Beep. 
<laughs> now the great thing about this process is that you could do it for any shape. It doesn't have to be a bomb. And so what I did is I went back, I 3D printed a Hylian shield and did the same thing in just a different shape. Although granted for this one, I didn't do a shell like I did for the bomb. I just mixed all the ingredients in with the chocolate, but the principle is the same and the outcome is equally cool. This is a really fun project to do on your own or with your kids and the end result is delicious. Cheers.